Now, the next step is to go ahead and drill the other two holes. So again, I'm going to come up here and hit the V key, and come here and hit the V key, and I'm going to hit finish again. Now, if I refresh the cam palette, you can see that I have two drilling operations. I have this drilling operation, which goes from here to here, and then the second drilling operation is here to here. Now, I have the drilling operation done. I will add in the codes to bring the, the bit over or the tool over and stop it here while I can insert the screws uh, after I've generated all the code. The next thing I want to do is go ahead and drill the uh, or bore out or cut the center holes here. So for that I first need to change the tool so we're going to go to the router bit and then I need to change the cut uh, type and so we're going to go down here and do a chain offset milling so now I have a new set of perimeters. Again, I can check the perimeters here. 0 0.5 is good. Point, uh, negative 0.265 is good. And then we go over here. Our feed rate can be about 15 inches a minute for this type of cut. So we're going to plunge at 15 as well. Uh, our offset. Very important that you make sure your offset is correct. In this case, it needs to be 0 0.0625, which is half of an eighth of an inch and the rest of the perimeters are fine so now we have some choices first off where do we start to cut and we we're going to start with this one up here i guess and so i'm going to click it now you can see i have an arrow i have lots of options here i can put the arrow right on the the line and that would give me a uh, cut where the bit goes right around the center of the line or I can move it to the left and now the cut would be with the bit to the outside of the line or I can move it to the right and the bit would be on the inside also the cut direction if I have the arrow up this way that means I'm cu cutting in a, a clockwise direction if I bring it down here then I'm cutting in a counterclockwise direction so I'm going to bring it up here and I'm going to click it and notice the arrow went on the inside and that simply lets me know that the bit, the tool, is going to be on the inside and that's exactly what I want so I'm going to hit the finish button and now you can see the tool path the red line represents the center of the tool and of course the green line it represents the edge so this is one edge, this is the outside edge and this would be the other outside edge of the tool. So you can see that it would go around on the uh, inside of this hole which is exactly what I want. Now let's go ahead and down here to this one and let's click it but this time I'm going to click it in the middle. Now notice the arrow is right on this, the line here and that simply means that the tool is now going to center itself on this line. So we're going to have a little bit of kerf on the outside and a little bit of kerf on the inside and we don't want that so I'm going to use the one step back button and now I can redo that so I'm going to click it here and if I do it on this side notice the arrow is out here and that's not what I want either so I'm going to one step back and click it again and now I'm going to put it on the inside now notice the arrow is on the inside it's going in the right direction so I'm going to click finish and now again you can see the the uh, cut is on the inside of that opening and that's exactly what we want. Okay, now let's go ahead and cut the outside of this part. So, we're going to come over and I'm going to start the cut in this corner right here. So, I'm going to click the corner and I want the cut this time to go on the outside, not on the inside. I want it to be on the outside and I want to go in a counterclockwise direction. So, I'm going to click, hold it out here and you can see it's going to start here in the corner and it's going to go around the outside and if we go ahead and click finish and we look you can see remember the green represents the outer edges of the tool the red is the center of the tool and notice that it is on the outside of my part and that's exactly what I want so I have this one here cut and then we're going to back up and, and go from this point here around and again we're going to be cutting in a counterclockwise direction and I'm going to click the finish tab and sure enough I have this one going to be cut out as well. Now notice over here in my uh, cam palette I do not have 
the information that I've created as far as the tool pass. I only have the drilling cycle. So all we have to do is refresh the cam palette and now you see operation number one it has four uh, lines in it and these four lines represent this hole, this hole, the outside uh, cut of this part and the outside cut of this part. So we have all of that in there. So now you can see I have a drilling cycle and I have a uh, milling cycle or operation for, for cutting out the parts. Now let's go ahead and review the g-code because I've got some editing to do. So in this case I'm going to right click on the actually I'm going to go back up here and again refresh to make sure that I have definitely have all of the code in here and now I'm going to go all the way up and hit part one right click and hit save g-code and I'm just going to call it CNC help and that's fine so I'm going to write over that and now I'm going to do it again except this time I'm going to open this because I need to view it so I'm going to open up that code this would be the code that I created notice here's the two drill cycles uh, the first operation is of drilling which is here and then the second operation see the first one is here and the second one is here that's because I finished in between so I actually broke that cycle up into two sections uh, and then this is the code to cut the uh, outside of the part as well as those openings so we're going to go back up and I'm going to take you step by step here with the code the first line up here should be what the code is and this in this case it's wood parts using a .125 router bit. Now I always identify what the part is and what tool to be used for the cut. Also this this percent sign, this percent sign is important because it lets you know where the first line of code is. It's also important that you use a percent at the end and I will talk more about that in a few minutes. So you want to start your code with a percent and end the code with a percent. Uh, the next series of lines of code are, to me, they're garbage because my machine doesn't uh, read them, it doesn't uh, follow them, so all they're doing basically for me is cluttering my G-code. And I don't like cluttering the G-code, so I remove them. Um, one of the codes that I'm going to keep are the G90 which that dictates how the machine operates whether it's incremental or absolute and in this case we want to be absolute so that's the G90 code now the other thing is the first line of code that you should have in your G code that actually moves the machine is a Z command to bring the tool up in my case I don't use clamps on my table, so a Z1, which puts it one inch above the material, uh, is more than sufficient for me because the biggest thing I'm going to have sticking above the material uh, is going to be a head of a screw. So if you're using clamps, you want to make sure that you uh, set your machine so that it clears the height of the clamps. The next thing, uh, the T1 is a tool and the M6 is like a tool change. Uh, I take all of this out. I do not need it. The uh, drilling, I'm just going to copy this and bring it and put it up here. And uh, the one thing that I want to add up here is a uh, feed rate. And in this case, because I'm at the drill cycle, I want a feed rate very fast, so my machine will run 100 inches a minute, so I'm going to put it at F90. So the F90 is the feed rate. The GOO is lifting the, the tool so that it can wrap it over without fear of hitting a clamp or anything that's setting on the, on the machine. 